All right. Well, welcome to the r and Show. Sit back and relax and enjoy the best little sports show ever. I'm your host, Michael Roop, and on the other side of this video is my co-host, William Rumsey. Hello, William. Who day? All right. Well, listen, William and I thought it was very important uh, as this season progresses to uh, start getting out some more content. And, uh, you know, obviously we've got a Huge, huge game uh, between the uh, the current, uh, you know, king, if you will, of the NFL, Tom Brady, and its prince, Joe Burrow. Oh, I see what you did. I like that. Okay. As well as, well as I like your haircut. You oh, know. It, you thank you, William. You know, obviously, uh, as you well know, I'm uh, heading down to uh, to Tampa to, uh, you know, cheer on my beloved Bengals against the uh, – uh, Tom Brady led Buccaneers, so I thought I'd want to look at my best for uh, Tommy Terrific. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I like <laughs> that. Yes, and but no, I do like the Prince of the NFL. That's good <laughs> stuff. I mean, right now across the national media, we're being hammered with with articles and everybody comparing the young Prince. You call him Joe Burrow to the goat Tom Brady. Just there's talking about you know a lot of comparisons, a lot of traits that are similar. But I thought I found it interesting that Alex Kappa, the offensive lineman that played in Tampa with Tom, said that they're they're completely different people. Obviously, there's a twenty, almost a twenty year gap in age, uh, but they have a lot of similarities and they're prepared. You know how prepared they are and how prepared they get everybody else. It's just exciting to hear that. You and I were slobbering all over ourselves earlier talking about you know how just lucky we are to have Joe and Jamar Chase. Um, on our team we just we haven't had that feeling I don't know if ever yeah I mean it, it really does feel good when you when you have uh, Joey B behind the uh, center and uh, along with Jamar Chase you have a feeling that you can win every game and it's been a long time since we said that now there's a lot of obviously other components to our team uh, mm -hmm. that get that feeling but uh, you know this is kind of like the uh, changing of the guard the uh, passing of the baton if you will yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, every game from here on out is big for every team that wants to uh, have a chance of making the playoffs. And the yeah. Bengals and Bucks are no different. The Bucks, you know, even with a, a sub-500 record, they are uh, still in control of their own destiny. So mm -hmm. everything matters to them, as well as the Bengals tied with the uh, the Ravens. Now, they do play each other uh, in that finale, uh, which should be a great game. Uh, but the, the, the Ravens have a, a pretty easy path uh, before that Bengals game, whereas the Bengals have a pretty tough path, path uh, you know, to, uh, to get to that finale. Uh, so, obviously, uh, these games going up to that are very important. So, obviously, the, the Bengals are coming off a, a win against the Browns where they got some – the monkey off their back, per se, uh, of the Browns. Burrow was 0-4. Um, so that's a good one. They've had a couple good wins in a row. Um, what do you think about Tom Brady coming off one of the worst shellackings of his career against the 49ers, against that defense that beat the crap out of him and his team? Do you think that bodes well for the Bengals, or is that kind of like, uh, you know, I, it doesn't I matter. it's week to week? Veteran laden team for the most part. So I don't think it really matters, to be honest with you. They were kind of due for, you know, one of those, you know, when they come, when they have these like come from behind tight victories like they did against the Saints, mm -hmm. there's a tendency to, you know, oh my God, you know, because you can't stay full throttle like that all yeah. the time. And, and quite frankly, when the, uh, when Mike Evans uh, touchdown got called back because of a hold, that really just took the air out of that team and, and they got shellacked, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Brody. At yeah, quarter. and yeah. I was reading. I was reading an article this week that talked about that. Is like you know the season for the NFL is such a long season. Every team, you know, unless you have the Patriots to go, into, they're gonna go through lulls. That's just the brutality of the NFL game. And I think it just it so happens that the Bengals lull, big lull, was at the beginning of the year for a multitude of reasons, and they've been trying to scratch and claw their. And I think. Weirdly, I think that's helped them kind of in the long run to have that adversity right off the bat, and they've come roaring back. And it, it, not that they haven't had adversity still throughout sure. the later. They've had some injuries they've had to deal with, whether it be Jamar Chase. Now we're dealing with the T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, 
Joe and Trey Hendrickson. Yeah, and Mason has missed multiple games. Yeah. Dealt with adversity, but I got to be honest with you, the Bengals have, ha- have handled it well. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, when you've got number nine behind center, he, he makes a lot of things look good that that aren't easy to do. But you know, he 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 just has that moxie that makes everything go pretty smoothly mm-hmm. uh, on the side of the ball. Now, defensive side of the ball. The Hendrickson, uh, you know, a couple games out is going to hurt. I mean, he, he is a big piece of that puzzle on that side of things. Uh, but that being said, you know, I got to be honest with you. If, if you're going to miss a game, I don't really mind him missing, a, a, you know, obviously a Buccaneers game because Tom Brady, for the most part, he gets the ball out like split split second. So, there isn't going to be much of a pass rush that's going to be able to get to him, uh, to be honest with you. Now, you don't get that type of analysis just anywhere, folks. No. It's well, good stuff. Well, it, it just – it doesn't – that the the whole pass rush concept just isn't going to matter too much in this game. Just for yeah. simple – he's reading the – he's the best at it. He's seen every coverage. So, he knows where he's going with the ball right when that thing gets hiked. He doesn't have to go through too many progressions. So – that pass rush isn't going to mean, uh, you know, that much. And and I think in Louis A, we trust Anaramo. Yes. Um, you know, he's got a system. He's been there for a while. He knows his players. He's going to – I feel like, you know, you hear this a lot, putting your players in positions to succeed. And I feel like Louis A does that. You yeah. know, he's he lost his – I mean, most teams, if they lose their number one cornerback, are going to be in trouble. Yeah. And they lost to Louis A. They, you know, Cam Taylor Britt came out that, you know, talk about it like a front office that we've before the last three years that we just thrashed that didn't have a GM, a scouting department. The last three years, they've come up aces, you know, and what I'm leaning on is that Cam Taylor Britt, they traded up to get him and he has been lights out, you know, and and they re-signed your boy Eli Apple, who's had a stellar season, too. Um, I that when I, I I didn't really like that, but he's been solid. I mean, to your point, whether it be in a draft or through free agency, they have hit on almost everything. I mean, they are hitting a, a tremendous clip, and they're going to have to do that, obviously, uh, looking down the road, obviously, when they have to pay uh, Joey B and uh, Chase. They, they're going to have to hit on a lot of these, you know, so-called retreads from the free agency and then hit on a lot of draft picks because there's going to be a lot of holes to fill because they're not going to be able to, to resign some of the, the stars that are going to have to be let go uh, due to the money. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So let's switch gears and talk a little bit about, you know, Burrow going up against that Buck Burrow and the Bengals offense going against the Buccaneers defense. I read something today that Louis A., our defensive coordinator, called – or no, Brian Callahan, our offensive coordinator, said that the Bucs Super Bowl winning defense if if they're all healthy. So what say you? What's Joey gonna Joey B gonna do in Tampa? Well, Joey's gonna carve that secondary up real nice. Yeah. I there promise. we go. He's gonna carve them up real nice. I don't know. Have we got any? I, I'm assuming Boyd's out, correct? Are we so carving up? Are we gonna call him Chef Burrow? We are. Oh, Chef Burrow Burrow RD. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like it. Jeff Burrow RD. I oh like man! It. Oh, are we making T-shirts? Do we got I, we got T-shirts on the way? Get that T-shirt pressed. <laughs> I do think he's going to carve them up. Now, now, do we know Boyd's definitely out? Correct. I, that's I don't know. I assume so. I you know. What about Higgins? Do we know anything about that? We don't know. He's he's gonna. It's gonna be another. I think game time decision. But I got to be honest with you, as long as we have Chase in there, Burrow's going to make everybody look good. Now, it is going to be a little harder uh, against the Bucks D if we don't have Hurst, Higgins, and Boyd. Hopefully we get one or two of those guys in there. Uh, but I got to be honest with you, the offense is humming. Now, they're not going to be able to run too much against that vaunted uh, Bucks D. Uh, that's kind of their, their trademark uh, calling yeah. card, the run defense. But I'm telling you, passing wise, they can be passed on. And when you get uh, uh, an elite quarterback like Burrow, he's going to do what he does, and he's going to carve them up real nice. Yeah, I mean, you, you most teams, if they lose their top three out of four receiving options, 
they're going to struggle. But QB one number nine, Chef Chef Burrow. I mean, he's been Dyson. I mean, RD. Uh, well, that's that's a little tough for me to say. You, uh, when I start saying things and I jack it up, you rip on me for three days. Chef Boy RD. What? Chef Boy RD. Isn't that like a spaghetti sauce or something? It, it, it's yeah, Chef Boy RD. Yeah. yeah. I like that Chef Burrow RD. RD. Yeah, that's that's good stuff. And that was a combo. I came up with the first part. Anyway, so, <laughs> so the, you know, I think it really boils down to is Tom Brady going to do anything against our defense? That, that, and really that's the crux of the whole situation. Yeah. What Mitch Riff is going to do against this Bengal D now? Um, I'm sure you guys watch, uh, you know, look at CBS Sports. I know our uh, fantasy football leagues are on that uh, platform. Yeah. And, you know, they, they tried to make it into a big deal where Brady was maybe throwing some shade at our Bengals defense. Yeah. Um, I didn't really see it that way. No. Um, but, you know, everybody's looking for an edge. But, you know, Brady's going to get his. I mean, it, it really gets down to our, our offense because Brady is going to make some plays against our defense, even though that offense has not looked good all year. They still have your Godwin Evans and uh, mm -hmm. obviously – uh, number 12 behind center. So they're going to get theirs because our secondary is beat up. Uh, you know, our, you speaking of a woozy ace, so they're going to make some plays in this. I just don't see any way that that offense has struggled all year. I think they're going to have to put up probably, uh, you know, 28 plus uh, against this Bengals team to win this game. And I just don't see how they, they're able to do it. I agree. I, I think our linebacking core and our secondary is excellent, along with our defensive line, even without Trey Hendrickson. I just think they're rolling. And I don't think the fact that Tom Brady's on this, – this is a well – you know, a team that's played in a Super Bowl. The experience is there. I just – maybe some younger teams or what have you would get starry-eyed about Tom Brady, um, but I just don't see this team. And I, I feel like we're going to – I have a feeling we're going to shut them down. I, and I got a feeling Burrow wants to put on a show for Tommy Terrific. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's funny. I saw, uh, I guess, Kevin Falk. Who Did you see that story? He he was an LSU guy, played with Tom Brady, won a championship with Tom Brady, maybe a couple. He was the player development guy at LSU when Brady arrived. So he got to know Tom, and he said that – or he, he got to know Burrow. And he said very early in the process when, when Burrow got to LSU – Falk reached out to Brady and said, I think we found the next one, basically. And so oh, he said, he basically says, I know for a fact Tom has been watching Burrow's career. Yeah. That, okay. that, aside, I know Bur Brady was uh, had uh, Tom or uh, Joe on his uh, podcast with uh, Fitzy uh, the other yeah. day. You know, and speaking of that one, I know that uh, you and I had a chance to watch, uh, you know, with our boy Colin Cowherd uh, with Joe Montana. I mean, people are throwing heaps and heaps and heaps of praise on uh, Joey B. Well deserved. Um, and I, you know, I think Joe's kind of just stayed even keeled with it all. He's not getting too high. He, you know, he enjoys uh, getting that kind of praise from these guys that he watched growing up. I mean, uh, Montana's probably a little too old for, uh, you know, Joey B, but, uh, yeah. you know, obviously because of his legacy. And when you get, uh, you know, the likes of Tom Brady throwing uh, praise on, on top of Montana, I mean, I think we, we all know here in Cincinnati, but I think the nation is starting to understand what, what we just have under center here and the, uh, the Natty. Yeah. It's been cool to watch. I mean, I've heard, and it seems like it comes from the older generation, like maybe my dad's generation. They say, oh, I think Burrow's getting a little cocky with his outfits and blah, blah, blah. I just – I think that's just who he is. I don't think he's really got – I mean, but if anybody if, – if somebody came out and said, oh, you're, we're comparing you to the next Tom Brady, I don't give a shit what anybody says. He, he knows those headlines, reads it, and that will affect you. Yeah. I don't know how it will affect you, but it will. Yeah. But he and handled – I mean, I think he's handled everything aces. The, the the whole outfit thing. I mean, that's that's just what this generation does. One thousand percent. Like now, just for instance, if since he is the quarterback in the face of the team now, if he wasn't um, taking the heat for like a drop pass, saying, "Well, I should have thrown the ball better," that's what he does. Now, if he was saying, "Well, you know, I ain't the receiver. I'm not catching the ball." If yeah. he does stuff that he just doesn't do that. 
That's yeah. what I, I, I could care less what he wears or yeah. anything. He says the right things and he does the right things. I don't really care about what he wears. I don't really care for the outfits, but hey, that's just me. Now, some of them I maybe like. The, hey, maybe the R&R should dap it up a little bit. But maybe should we, we come on our shows a little bit more dapped up? Instead of these boring sweatshirts, maybe we should up our game. I want all right. I want you when you're going into the stadium to to put a little pizzazz in your 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 outfit. You want you want me to have a little extra bounce going in? I there. do. Get out there, don't you? Yeah. You, you want the people in the stands not to talk about the people on in the field, but that flashy guy up there. Yeah. <laughs> That's good stuff. What one other thing? Let's talk about our special teams real quick. Obviously. Okay. Uh, you know, Lawrenceburg native Drew Chrisman doing just a, a, a great job. He had uh, a rough week last week. He did. He did. But overall, I got to be honest with you, he's done a great job. That, that Kevin Huber, uh, you know, era needed to go. And, and, you know, I'm glad we got a young buck in there. Uh, just so happens he, he's a, a hometown kid, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, I can't be more, uh, you know, happy and uh, excited to, uh, to get to watch him play is uh, for the Bengals. Yeah, no, I think it's very cool. But do you think you know he struggled last week with punts, and then McPherson also missed missed an extra point. That's the one. That's the one thing that I, I was more worried about than anything. I mean, you're going to have some bad days punting. It just happens. Yeah. Uh, but now, if you have two in a row, then we may we we may revisit this. But the yeah. the, the more concern is. I looked at kind of like the body language of uh, Money Mac after that miss, and it was like, eh, I don't know if <laughs> insinuating maybe the old wasn't quite up. Oh, God. Are we going to hold a roster spot for Huber just to hold? I hope not. But God. You know, still, things happen. Um, you know, you, you just – you just you don't want that to become a uh, – no, I mean, it's – Money Mac had a, literally a historic playoff run last year, and that whole battery besides him is gone. It's different. Yeah. Now, do we know if the uh, our uh, our long haired boy Harris is going to be back? Uh, I don't think so. I think he was out for the year. Okay. You mean next year? I, I don't know. I would assume. I got... William, I'm 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 worried about this year. Yeah, I... yeah. Um, I think. Yeah, I think he's long in the two, so I think going with the young guy probably is the way they're going to go, but I don't know. Okay. So are we ready for predictions? I, I believe so because I got a flight to catch here, William. Okay. So. All right. All right. Um, I go will take – what? I say you go ahead and go, go first. Ahead. Okay. I, I think I think we've already talked about, you know, the offense, defense, what have you. I think that the Bengals are going to win 27 to 17. I think it's a big 10 point win. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm almost, you know, around that uh, area. I said that, you know, the magic number was 28, and that's where I want to stick with. Okay. Uh, I, I think the, uh, you know, the Bengals uh, don't need to, uh, you know, rely on that field goal operation. I think they punch them in each and every time. I'm going with the 28 uh, 17 score. Oh, so I was 27 17, you're 28 17, pretty much spot on. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, I just think 28, I, I just think that's, there's no way that the Buccaneers offense right now with the way they're looking, uh, you know, schematically, I, I still think number 12's got it. I still know the receivers got it. It's mm -hmm. just a fair line. I just don't think that they're going to be able to do enough in the run game. Yeah. Uh, make it easy for Tom to hit these passes, uh, you know, uh, you know, when they go downfield, it, it just, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, with DJ Reader down there, they they held Nick Chubb to 34 yards. Rashad yeah. White and Leonard Fournette aren't Nick Chubb. So, that well, sounds like we got a big big win from both parties. Um, I, I'm excited to go down to Tampa. I'm that's sure cool. Channel 5 News crew may be there. We may be partying with them. I don't know what's going on. Oh, yeah, oh gonna... rubbing elbows with the elite. I like yeah. it. It's what I do. It's what I do. But, uh, you know, so, uh, maybe I'll give a, a little in-game action, a little video, a little we art do. of correspondence down there in Tampa. Yeah, I like it. Or maybe yeah. we'll do another Zoom. Yeah, Let, we, we just may do that. We may so, do that. You know, we, we will have uh, Athletic Director Ryan Walston down there, too. Maybe we'll uh, 
some, uh, you know, input from him down there. Okay. Okay. Well, hey, buddy, safe travels. Have fun. Sounds good. Drink one, drink one for me. And one last thing, uh, real quick, you know, as the games, uh, you know, are, are holding a lot of importance in the NFL, for a lot of people at home, the fantasy playoffs kick off. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we're in a, in a few leagues together, and uh, it's getting exciting. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a decision to make. Do I roll Tommy Terrific out there in the playoffs, man? I, I know. I'm glad I don't have that decision. It's either make. him or Brock Purdy. Mm-hmm. Who's Purdy play? Uh, At Seattle. He's been pretty good. Oh, there we go. (laughs) I I would probably, you know, if it was me, I think I might roll with Purdy. Uh, That's what I'm leaning. If if he's got an oblique issue, if it comes out, he's okay and rolled out there, I'm probably rolling him out there. Oh, well, we'll tune in next week to see how Mm -hmm. that. Uh, I may not show my face after that. Sounds good, William. Well, I'll talk to you on Sunday down there at the game, buddy.